Patients with head and neck cancer present in a multitude of ways depending on where the site of the primary tumour is. So patients with uh, tongue cancer may present with an ulcer on the tongue or a red or a white patch, so leukoerythroplakia. Patients with tonsil tumours can present with a unilateral um, throat pain or difficulty in swallowing. That's the commonest way also for patients with a base of tongue tumour to present. They present with a, a difficulty swallowing or pain at the back of the throat. And patients with a voice box cancer or larynx cancer present with a, a hoarse voice or a change in voice. And it's sometimes difficult to distinguish that from a, a patient who's getting older who just ends up with a bit less puff from the lungs to be able to produce a strong voice. But the patients that we worry about is a, a hoarse voice that's present for more than three weeks that is out of character for that patient. And especially those patients that have a significant smoking history, we would certainly want to review in clinic and perform a direct laryngoscopy in order to exclude any underlying malignant cause. Head and neck cancer patients present in two main cohorts, two main groups. Um, the traditional patient, um, which makes up 70% of our head and neck patients, are patients that generally have a history of smoking and drinking. The new cohort coming through, the 30%, is patients who have um, been affected by uh, a virus called human papillomavirus or HPV, and that makes up now 30% of our patients, and it's increasing year on year. The HPV patients are normally affecting the, um, the oropharynx, which is the, the tonsil and the base of tongue. And these are generally younger patients. They haven't got a significant history of smoking or drinking, although they can have, and they present often with a lump in the neck. That's the first time they're aware of the fact there's something wrong. I think the HPV vaccine that we are currently offering to our teenage girls will impact on head and neck cancer down the line, as well as the cervical cancer and the anogenital cancer, which it's designed for. Um, we're vaccinating for HPV-16 as part of the quadrivalent vaccine and the main uh, subtype of HPV that affects head and neck cancer is HPV-16, so in that we're very lucky. Unfortunately, men are twice as likely as women to present with HPV-driven head and neck cancer. So what would be probably sensible in the long run is if we vaccinate teenage boys as well in order to protect the cohorts um, who are more likely to present with HPV-driven disease. In the secondary care setting, uh, once a patient has been referred to us, we take a full history and clinical examination, and that examination would also include a flexible nasendoscopy to look at the um, hyperpharynx, the oropharynx, and the larynx. Depending on what we see, we would then proceed with imaging, if that's appropriate, such as an ultrasound and final aspiration, and an MRI scan if we want to get better, more detailed imaging of the neck. But often these patients um, proceed with a panendoscopy and biopsy in order to get a tissue diagnosis. And certainly if we see an abnormal area of mucosa, that's what we'll proceed with. All neck lumps should not be referred straight to secondary care because I think this, the system would collapse under the pressure of that sort of referral load. I think it's not unreasonable for GPs to prescribe a course of antibiotics to see whether the neck lump resolves. Um, however, it's worth bearing in mind that patients with HPV-driven head and neck cancer often present with a neck lump and we need to capture them early in the pathway rather than having repeated courses of antibiotics and then being referred in. With head and neck cancer we follow patients for five years. This is an arbitrary figure, I'm not sure who devised it but this is the, the standard care across the world. Um, after the five years, we refer the patient back to the GP and they continue just their normal routine monitoring of the patient. Clearly, if there are any problems or concerns, we're very happy to review the patient and they just slot straight back into the head and neck clinic without a significant delay. Mm -hmm.